Uh, everyone's only playing Orcus is so annoying. There's actually a lot of good decks in the game right now. Sky Strikers are even still good. There's too many decks out. But you just said that everyone was playing Orcus. There's too many decks out and everyone's playing Orcus. Okay, Eugene, what do you want to play then? Necros format. You mean where everybody had to play outs to the Jinlock? Uh, then Steam? Oh, you mean the format named after only two decks? Uh, uh, Go format. The format that's named after one card? Hatch format? You know, I think I see where you're going with this. What is this format called then? No fucking clue. Orcus though, probably Orcus format. What is up guys, it is so good being back. I wanna start this video off with some insanely great news. Yu-Gi-Oh Jesus, your own very personal Yu-Gi-Oh Jesus is now officially sponsored by a card shop. You heard that correct, 1UP TCG in Mississippi. Say that 10 times fast, cause I totally did on the previous recording. Oh my gosh, it was awful trying to get that. 1UP TCG, 1UP TCG in Mississippi has decided to be the 1UP TCG in Miss- Nah, 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 nah. 1UP TCG in Mississippi has decided to be the official- uh, God, see, I can't fucking do it. 1UP TCG in Mississippi has decided to be the official card sponsor of the second coming of Yu-Gi-Oh! Jesus. The owner is a guy I actually met at the last Tulsa Regional. Um, you guys saw me troll him and his staff um, in the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Jesus goes to a tournament video. Um, he was a good sport about it. His staff was awesome. It was just a really good time and we hit it off. And you guys know me. You know I don't like to work with jerk-offs or anything like that. So I'm very fortunate um, that everything went well and that we got along so well and that I have a solid sponsor now. He's actually sending me some cards right now for some decks I need to get, you know, videos and stuff done for you guys. So this is already kick ass. I want to thank John so much. You guys should thank John too. You you really, really, really should. And here's why. Because I was able to get something worked out with him to where you guys get 10% off of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. That is correct, guys. I got you hooked up with 10% off of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Crazy. Maybe I can get you guys 10% off of mats in the future again too. We'll, we'll see about that. But until then guys, yes, you get 10% off at checkout at 1uptcg.com. The link is down in the description and you enter in the code NONO2020. That is it. You get 10% off. No catches, nothing. That is it. Yugi Jesus has blessed you with 10% off of cards. All of the Yugi Jesus jokes aside though, seriously, thank John. John John's the guy, um, you know, if he would have uh, not been such a good sport or not liked me trolling him and his staff, this could have gone uh, an entirely different direction. So <laughs> I think this is going to work out really well. Because Yu-Gi-Oh! is all about fun, guys. It's all about fun and that's all I want, guys. I want to feel like I am playing, not working. That's what all this is about. But now onto the main topic of this video. I want to discuss actually the current Yu-Gi-Oh! format. Mainly though, Orcus. Because Orcus made up 50% of all decks represented in Top 64 at YCS London. So it's very safe to say that the deck is still very good even with Mermaid Band. Which, I'm still salty about Mermaid being banned, by the way. That totally hurt my Herald deck, like this Herald deck that I had, that you guys didn't get to see because it was before I came back. But either way, okay, I had this really cool deck, and you guys don't get to see it now because they banned Mermaid. Yu-Gi-Oh sucks sometimes. Seriously, though, I do like generic engines, but it was probably for the best because Mermaid made going into Skulldred even easier. And I love Skulldred, but Skulldred's also a really stupid card and you can keep going with it because you draw, you know, you see more cards and yeah, it's, it's just stupid. I can see why it, you know, Mermaid had to go. But let's start this discussion off by talking about generic engines in Yu-Gi-Oh and why they are actually very good for the game. I'm going to state something very simple here and then I'll branch my arguments and discussion off of that, okay? So stating something very simple, Generic engines and Yu-Gi-Oh! Generic cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Standardized formats. That's what they help do. Orcus in the current format is used in Luna Lights, Cyber Dragons, Dinos, Pendulums, and I'm looking at Yu-Gi-Oh! Top decks right now. It's safe to say that it's a generic engine in Yu-Gi-Oh! Orcus can be considered a generic engine in Yu-Gi-Oh! And how generic engines in Yu-Gi-Oh! Standardized formats is very simple. Since everybody is playing those cards or playing the cards in that engine, you know, playing that engine, you know what everyone's playing. It's just that simple. Since everyone's playing those, or most decks are playing those cards, you know the cards in most people's decks. Th th that's it. You know how to counter those decks, you know how they work, all of that. Because it's going to be the same cards used every single time, unless there's a ban list that comes and changes the ratios, whatever, you know that stuff happens, but it's gonna be the same cards. I can tell you guys from first-hand experience right now, getting back into the game, it's nice having everybody play a lot of the same junk. It's easier to learn and pick up the format that way. Because when the format is all over the place, which it kind of still is, but when it's all over the place, it's really overwhelming to see all these new cards that you have to keep learning 
playing, you know, or see all these cards played, or see all these decks that are played, and you have to learn a lot. It makes you want to go hide in goats, you know? That's what I want to go do. I want to go hide and play goat format, because it's just too much. So yeah, formats like Duelist Alliance format, where there was like Burning Abyss and Klee and uh, Shadal and stuff, just a few decks that are really good, or, or uh, you know, Steam format, where there was two decks that were really, really good. Um, those formats are awesome for the game, because you know what decks are good, you know what cards are played, so you know how to counter them, or at the very least, you know how to play the deck. It's the same strategies used, um, no matter if it's like a deck or an engine. If you're playing another copy of the best deck, like it's a mirror match or whatever, uh, you need to know how your opponent's deck plays so that you know how to counter it, of course. You, you, you need to know your deck because you'll know your opponent's deck. And then also, if you want to play some anti-meta shenanigans, let's just say you don't want to play, you know, what's uh, in the metagame, uh, you still need to know how to uh, beat those cards. And having uh, standardized cards and standardized uh, field conditions and stuff, things that are, you know, recurring and, um, you know, constant in the format, that's just better. It's just better for the game. It keeps things simple, and simplicity is just best. Another thing here about Orcus is that they want to be in the graveyard. For people that complain about Orcus, that is not anything new. It's not. The Perform Age engine, for example, is now only in recent history starting to creep off the ban list and, you know, the clowns want to be in the graveyard. And of course, when the clowns came out, everyone started playing them. You literally had to. I even came up with this rank four evil swarm clown deck that for its time actually wasn't that bad. You had to play clowns. Like everybody played clowns. Um, they were just that good. And that's actually a really good example that I want to uh, use to go into my next argument here. Um, generic engines in Yu-Gi-Oh can even be used to standardize rogue decks because like the example I just gave, um, Evil Swarms, I played clowns and that, a lot of rogue decks played clowns at that time because the engine was just too good. So um, using that argument, things like clowns, generic engines in Yu-Gi-Oh, you know how to beat rogue. It helps you play against Rogue better, and it helps you play against decks that you aren't familiar with because at least they have those cards that you are familiar with. So to put that simply, if an engine is so good that every deck has to play it, even Rogue has to play it. So therefore, you know how to play against Rogue. Even single cards can define a format though, guys. Vanity's Emptiness, we were talking about the List Alliance format a minute ago, pretty good example. I actually like formats with a simplified game state and cards that everybody had to play around. Monarch format, you guys all know, is one of my favorite formats of all time, and the Domain Law define that format for damn sure. And we were talking about Duelist Alliance format earlier. Um, let's go ahead and segue that into Necros format because that's another very good example of a format that became standardized because of a lock. We were just talking about Monarchs. Let's talk about Necros. So of course in Necros format the best deck was Necros. Who knew? Everyone was playing that deck right when it came out in Secret Forces and that deck a, a huge reason why that deck won so much was not just because of its consistency, but because, and mainly because of the Jin Lock, okay? The Jin Lock guys kept your opponent from special summoning, so if you wanted to be able to special summon with your deck, which is something that most decks did and still do to this very day in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, you had to out that thing. You had to out the ritual monster that was affected by Jin in order to be able to special summon. Otherwise, you were going to lose against Necroz. Necroz was an insanely good deck and it could protect itself very, very, very well. And it could protect its own Jin lock. So people played all kinds of weird crap. Bullblader, uh, Shock Troops of the Ice Barrier at one point, but mainly Raigeki, Dark Hole, you know, uh, cards like that, Book of Moon. Uh, things that would, you know, just set or get rid of the monster on the board so that you could, you know, then special summon. Uh, the point is, you had to play cards because of one lock, because of one play, because of a play with one card, because of one combo, in one deck. It defined an entire format, guys, and in a good way, because you knew what cards your opponent was playing. Even if you weren't completely familiar with, I don't know, Shadal, for example, you knew that your opponent had to be playing Rageki and stuff because of the Jin lock. So you could at least anticipate or try to read if your opponent had a Rageki or a Dark Horror or not, for example. And when formats are really standardized like that, that's when you start to get into those kinds of mind games, poker games with your opponent. Because you both know what cards are played and so you can kind of read and play off of each other. And it makes the format so much better, which is why, I mean, you guys hear me preach about GOAT so much. But seriously, that's why GOAT format is so fucking good. But keep in mind, at the same time here, the Jin Lock wasn't super broken to the point to where no other deck could top. That wasn't true. Burning Abyss topped plenty of times. Klee, everything did well at some point or another. Like, in some tournament or another. The Hero Structure deck came out around that time. Heroes were a good deck. You get my point that even though um, that lock was still around, it only defined the format. It didn't break the format. 
in um, comparison to zoo format, oh my gosh, you guys lost me at zoo format. Oh, you really, really did. It was that deck. It wasn't Lynx. It was that deck. Everyone and their dog had to play that. At 60 cards, at 40 cards, it did not matter. You had to play the zoo engine, and it was stupid. It was so stupid. It defined the format in a bad way, in a tier zero way. There's the good way, and then there's the tier zero way. I want to be clear here. Now, I want to talk about some other cards besides the Orcus engine um, that I feel like kind of define and round out and standardize the current Yu-Gi-Oh format. And these, of course, are just my personal observations from coming back into the game, you know, relearning this current Yu-Gi-Oh format, all that stuff. There's still so much to learn here, but um, these are just some of my observations, and some of them are just kind of observations I made kind of keeping up with the game here and there, you know, um, when I was gone. But some cards that are really good and I feel like also round out the format are um, Hornet Drones, uh, because Hornet Drones is a card that is a plus for your opponent. Um, it helps build to cards like Boral Sword and I don't know, uh, you know, uh, Boral Load, whatever, uh, Skull Dread. Uh, Big Link Monster is easier. Um, it's just a really good card. It's a plus card for your opponent, so you know to negate it because it's a starter for your opponent. At least one of the, you know, it's one of the starters for your opponent. Um, even if they're not playing Sky Striker, it could be a starter for your opponent, which is why I'm saying it kind of helps standardize things. Um, on the subject of Skull Dread um, and Boral Sword, uh, those are two, you know, you, and Bor uh, yeah, and Boral Load. Those are uh, some big link monsters that, you know, everybody, uh, they're staples. They're like Castell and stuff. Um, you know, Castell in uh, generic rank fours, you know, back in the day helped define a format because you know that your opponent's going to have those cards. Um, these days, you know your opponent's going to have a Boral Sword or a Boral Load and stuff like that. So um, those cards are very, very, very good. And then, of course, there's your generic link monsters. Uh, there's that Salaman great card that people are playing now. And then, of course, you know, Under Clock Taker, that's a generic link that's been around for a while. Link Karibo. Those are all very, very good uh, generic link monsters. Link Karibo less so, but you, you get where I'm going with this. They're monsters that you know your opponent's going to have. And that's pretty much the main point I'm making here is that um, since we all know what cards are the best or good or the most generic and uh, the most useful all around, use that to your advantage. Use that to your knowledge, guys. That's, that's part of learning and um, out playing and out chess moving, out poker playing your opponent in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's all a part of the game. But moving on to some other cards I feel like round out things very well. Um, evenly matched, um, that card's been around for a while, but I, yeah, evenly matched and Nibiru. Um, the point here, and that, that Nibiru is a newer one, uh, the point here I'm trying to make is a same point that I made a, a long time ago, like on this channel, and it's, and it's a very, very simple one. You can't have all these broken decks being able to um, come up with these really broken boards and you can't have these effect monsters activate during either player's turn and all this stuff. You can't have all of this without something on the other side to be able to get over that, to be able to overcome those massive boards. Um, otherwise, the game is uneven. That's a huge part of the reason why Pepe format was so dumb, is that you had to play stuff like Lava Golem and, and just cards that you normally wouldn't play just to be able to out these quick effect monsters and stuff, and then by the end of everything, your opponent was still plus on you by the time you added their board because they went so plus on the first turn. We didn't have as many outer cards. We didn't have evenly matched yet, for example. So we didn't have a lot of these cards, like Nibiru is another really great example. We didn't have those. So having a lot of these uh, more modern cards, um, like Dark Ruler No More, that's another one. Um, having these cards, um, Amano Awato, that's another really, really good one, but <laughs> my point here, having all of these cards that um, allow you to go second in Yu-Gi-Oh, allow you to kind of stun out, uh, brick out uh, your opponent's board and be able to come back, um, that is really, really great. We have a lot more of that. There's a, a greater abundance of that in Yu-Gi-Oh than there has been ever. There really has been. And um, because of that, if you notice, we don't have set ban list dates anymore. We don't. The reason why is because there's such an abundance of cards in our card pool and everything is even and they come out with more and more and more cards so often there's not some there's not ever anything that's like that broken to where there has to be a quick ban list. That's why formats last a lot longer these days than they used to, which is great because let the formats play out. Let them play out. Like, we need to see where they go. Don't ban anything or do anything unless it actually becomes a problem. My only complaint is that I feel like they vomit out cards way quicker than they should. I, I feel like during formats, there's way too many new cards to learn as you go during formats, and they, I think they come out with sets way too fast these days. That's just me, though. You guys might not feel the same, but that's that's how I feel, and that's just really my biggest complaint. Um, but I do like the abundance of cards at the same time, though, because I genuinely feel like that causes less ban lists. Although, at the same time, I do miss ban list season. Yu-Gi-Oh is confusing. 
in closing, generic cards like Hornet Drones in this format or Heavy Storm in GOAT format, good. Because you know you want to negate drones, for example, because you know it's a plus card and you know it's really good if they're playing Sky Striker anyways. So yeah, like drones is a good card. It's at one for a reason. You might want to stop that thing. There are of course other cards that I could be talking about, but I just feel like talking about that one because that one's not only played in Sky Striker, which won YCS London, but because drones of course, like I've said, is a generic card. It could be played in a lot of different decks. It's a great starter card. It's just a really good card. Or like I was saying, Heavy Storm and Goat Form because everybody knew not to set five back row in that format unless you had the judgment to back it up because you were probably going to get heavy storm. Generic engines like Orcus and recurring field conditions like Jin Lock and Domain Lock also good for the game. If everyone is using the same strategies and playing the same cards, you know what to do against them. You know how to play it. It's just that simple. You know what to do. So learn and play Yu-Gi-Oh. Have fun, guys. Play Yu-Gi-Oh. Subscribe! <laughs>